how are you going to capture the essence of Bumbo Hui without like any of the pork knuckle, the pig's blood? Uh, how we, do you do it? We have our own Buddhist uh, recipes that uh, you just have to taste it, man. Chuck Mung Nam You still gotta give me my red envelope. I'm not even married yet. No, I gave you the blessing. That's a Viet hustle, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Mo Hai Ba Yo! Yo. What's going on everybody? Welcome to a very special and interesting Vietnamese episode of Phong Bros Food. Today we're going to two of the most interesting and innovative and cutting edge Vietnamese restaurants in all of New York City. They're doing things you've never seen before, dishes you've never seen before. And of course, we could not do it without an authentic Vietnamese co-host. Today we've got special producer and director Rose Nguyen in the house. Rose, can you explain to people where you're from? I was born and raised in Cang Thang. Lived there for 13 years, moved to the United States about 12 years ago. Live in San Jose. Live in Philadelphia, but now I'm living in New York. Of course, we got to start off today on one of the craziest streets in Williamsburg right now. We are in front of Bolero Restaurant. I heard they are doing things here that they might not be doing anywhere else on earth. All right, you guys, we are here with the owner of Bolero, Matt. Can you tell us about this spot? Because we're in like a Vietnamese garden right now. We're listening to Vietnamese French covers. What's going on? Welcome to Bolero. What we're doing here is post-colonial Vietnamese food, incorporating higher techniques that I picked up training at Michelin star restaurants. I believe we're the only place that cooks pho in a combi oven. So Bolero, where the name came from, Vietnamese first heard it from the Parisians that brought it over. Cuban Bolero was happening back in France in the 1930s, and then the French brought it over and we were a French colony back then. All right, opening up our experience here at Bolero, we got a banger here. Matt, tell us what's going on, man. So we have Ho Bit Long, which is a fertilized duck egg. So how, how similar is this to the uh, Filipino balut? Is it pretty much the same uh, thing? Very similar, but okay. except we eat ours with salt and pepper, and Vietnamese coriander, which is this leaf down here, which we put on anything poultry. So most restaurants have a beer and a uh, whiskey shot. We have a beer, Saigon beer, Moto whiskey, rice whiskey, Vietnamese, and it comes with a duck egg. Hi. Bye bye, yo! What's up everybody? Gotta give a quick shout out to the sponsor of our video, Secured. Secured is a brand new website that is helping you increase your chances of getting the most exclusive sneaker, streetwear, and trading card drops out there. We've all taken L's on the sneakers app. I have two myself, but that's because the chances are just really low, but Secured is here to increase your chances by many, many times, and I'm gonna tell you why. Become a member, they have a lot of cool features, and some of my favorites are that they let you enter as many raffles as possible, therefore giving you the best chance to win. You don't just enter in one you can enter in multiple across the globe so think about it instead of just like a one in ten thousand chance for example uh you can be one in five thousand or even one in three thousand three hundred and thirty three you know the math so on drop days you can view all your drops in one tab so it's all succinct and all put together it's very very organized also when you're browsing the release calendar they even tell you how much money you can profit off of it if you resold it and that's for the resellers. That's what I love about this app. It's not just for the collectors, it's also for the resellers if that's what you're into. Um, their secured bot is super, super advanced too. It's almost something like out of a futuristic movie. I mean, you want the elite AI working on your side. This works on sites like Supreme and Shopify and on trading card sites such as Target.com. They also offer one-on-one -on -one guidance with a secured expert when you become a member. So here's a little freebie trick that Secured offers on their website, but they wanted me to tell you this right now. You can actually enter up to three raffles on the Sneakers app at one time. All you need to do is sign up for three different accounts using the same PayPal account. Then you sign into the Sneakers app, enter the raffle, log out, wipe your apps out, then turn it onto airplane mode for 15 seconds, then sign in with another account and so on. So. Just within like 20 seconds, Secured has increased your chances by 300% on the Sneakers app. Think of the chances that you will have when you become a member and actually take full advantage of everything they offer. It's wild. With my code FUNGROS, you can get 50% off the first month. So if there's a pair of sneakers that are dropping soon, I think now would be a good time to sign up and give it a shot. Clearly, they're very confident that it'll help you get what you want. So check out Secured. Remember, use the code FUNGROS for 50% off, that's only $15 for your first month. It's totally worth it, give it a shot. Guys, you got the bot on your side. Go for it. So there's a way to do this. You tap the, the top of the egg carefully and you peel it off like a lid and you reveal a little amniotic sac that you need to break. <laughs> there's no season in this No, we, live, we can't put fish sauce on it. No, you can, <laughs> but it's very flavorful. Mo, hi, ba, yo. yo. It's not bad, it tastes like a very egg yolky like water. So, 
you never know how big this baby is. Mine, I'm pretty lucky. Shout out to the, to the sulfur looking like Oh, yeah. Uh, I just, rock. there we yeah. go. Yeah. Head. <laughs> it looks like crack. All right, down the hatch, baby. Let's go. Yeah, guys, I'm about to salt bay this little yeah. embryo. Real creamy, look at that. Mmm. And they wow, it's good. It's good. It's healthy. It's it's good. healthy. All right, so this is one thing we picked up from the French. It's just pate making. So we use Asian chicken liver in ours instead of American chicken. We do a little ode for Vietnamese dads out there. The aspects made from cognac and sherry. And then this is fish mint from our farm in Pennsylvania. And then this is duck prosciutto and a quiche. This is our uh, ben sale or a crispy crepe pizza. We make our own shrimp sauce specifically from quay, house pure prosciutto, baby leeks. Arugula and then my takis. This is our play on uh, Ben Bale, which is a hue delicacy where my parents are from. It's usually made with rice and tapioca, blinis style in this shape, but we felt that raw scallops are kind of the same texture. So we placed it with a scallop crudo. And usually it comes with pork crackling, but we do Berkshire crackling. And dulce flakes. Chaka la vong, which is a northern Vietnamese dish. Normally in Vietnam they use catfish, but I feel like catfish kind of suck up here, so we use skate instead. Marinate the same way. So here, this kind of looks like steak and potatoes. This is uh, ball of luck, shaken beef. Normally, the essence of Vietnam, everything needs to be grilled. But here at Bolero, we sous vide, and then we just like flash on the grill to get that essence of Vietnam. All right, you guys, we are here at the most interesting restaurant I've personally ever been to as far as Vietnamese food goes. This is a bun bell with a scallop replacement at the bottom. Scallop bun bell. That's interesting because it still has some of that same texture as the rice flour mixture from the original dish with a nice little gooey twist. Hey, I see what they did there. They were like, yo, how do we elevate Bumbel? The thing looks the same as a scallop. Do a scallop. Yo, let's go to the pate, guys. Prosciutto pate here at Bolero. Did you guys notice the pate has like a liquor layer on top? Yeah, I think that's what the sweetness is from. Sweet bourbon like liquor flavor on top. That is so good. Yo, Andrew, cut up that bun sale up right now. That bun sale, mm -hmm. it almost looks like a arugula prosciutto pizza. Duck bun, bun sale. Bun sale, yet. I didn't know what it was gonna taste like. And then I got to the sweet fish sauce flavor and I got to the bun sale pancake. Mm -hmm. And man, that, mm -hmm. is, that is extra special. My talking mushrooms, delicious here. Check out. Check out. Check out. Check out. Check out. Check out. This is uh, skate wings instead of catfish. I've never wow. had arugula with fish sauce next to each other. All right, now we have their version of Bo Luck Luck. It's souveed beef, seared a little bit on the grill. Let's go for it, man. Bo Luck Luck, steak version. Mmm, that Bo Luck Luck is not lacking. All right, you guys. That does it for our solid entrees, but coming up next, we've actually got the Bolero take of Vietnamese soup. We're getting in the soup section. Matt, what are we looking at? We're looking at Bung Bao Kuei Chai, the vegan version of the famous soup that Anthony Bourdain said, the universe stops when he eats this. Ooh. We do it with a lot of my takis, my mom's classic recipe, but we put a tofu torsion in there, made out of tofu skin. And then our herb plate usually has bean sprouts, right? But we do uh, golden pea shoots and then blooming cilantro as well. I gotta ask you, how are you going to capture the essence of Bung Bao Kuei without like any of the pork knuckle, the pig blood. Uh, How do we, you do it? We have our own Buddhist recipes that uh, you just have to taste it, man. Look at this big piece <clears throat> of my taki mushroom. Ah! Shout out. Vegan bumbo way. Bumbo way, guy. That's good. I had no idea that vegan bumbo way could taste like that. Yo, that vegan bumbo way has so much flavor in it. I'm drinking all the soup. Okay, so for dessert, what do we have? So this is a Ben Bao Nuung, which is like a honeycomb cake. There's no wheat in it. It's just like single afternoon yeast, and we call striation through eggs and tapioca flour. All right, guys, we are finishing up here at Bolero. We have our egg coffee, which is a mixture of condensed milk and egg yolk on top of our coffee. Yo, I gotta have a sip of this real quick. Mm. My goodness, that is strong. <laughs> guys, you've had Viet coffee before, but this is the hot version with egg. All right, you guys, we are looking at our pandan rice cake, you know, Vietnamese mochi, right? It's actually funny because ban is pie, bò is like pow. So I don't know where the names come from, but yo, this looks good. Ban, ban, ban bò. Bò. Wow. Bro, 
that is so decadent. It melted in my mouth, but it was crispy on the outside. I don't even know what I just ate. Guys, that was an amazing meal here at Bolero. If you get the chance, I say check it out. And we got one more spot to go to, but before we go, we're gonna go outside and perform a traditional Vietnamese ritual. Let's go. All right, so before we go on to our next spot, Bun, which is over in the Upper West Side of Manhattan, we got a ritual that we're gonna be uh, performing with you, something that we've never done before. So one thing, I, I did a lot of research about Vietnamese rice whiskey. It's kind of like moonshine in Vietnam, but back in the 1900s, turn of the century, I read that Vietnamese dudes would just pour some shots out for their dead homies as a sign of respect. Also, we have joss paper, where any of our guests can uh, light it and burn it and send it up to their dead ancestors for good fortune. So I want to hand it out to all you guys cool. and pour some shots for you, yeah? All right. R.I.P. Francis. Guys, that is closing up Bolero with some very traditional Vietnamese cultural rituals. That was so cool. But we got to make a quick trip up to the Upper West Side because Bun is doing some ceremonial New Year's dishes that you cannot find at any other Vietnamese restaurant. Let's go. All right, everybody, our next spot is called Bun. It is over in the Upper West Side. We're far up, and this is an area that a lot of people wouldn't expect to find very authentic or innovative Vietnamese food, but they're doing it here. I've been looking at the menu and a lot of these dishes that I haven't had in like 15 years. So I'm just excited to share like, and try a lot of them. Um, Nhu, one of the owner is from Central Vietnam and the other is Johnny and he's bringing a lot of innovation to this type of cooking and I'm just like can't wait to try these combinations of traditional and innovation. Here are some Viet dishes that you may have not seen before. Okay, I'm here with Chef Nu. What are you making right now? So we're making the steamed rice roll. This is the signature dish from Hanoi. So we soak our batter overnight and make a very thin layer of uh, rice over uh, here, but I need to like wait a little bit. So this is, you know, like the rice roll Chinese uh, style, uh -huh. but our cooking technique, we use like put the rice powder on top. So the Chinese rice roll is like a lot thicker and the filling is different. Yeah. The dipping sauce is very different too. So in our cooking technique, we use a lot of fish sauce. All right, so we got a lot of amazing food here at Bun. Some of it looks familiar, but these dishes we got to start off with because I've never in my entire life, even on Google search, seen these dishes and why is that? I have to start first with this thật kho. Essentially, this is the type of dish we eat for three days straight every new year. And the reason why it's so good to cook because it's very easy to cook in large quantity. And on the third and fourth day, the coconut water is actually Actually simmering to the bone and so it just gets better as we just like we heat it and just keep eating it on the new year so this looks like a nice Vietnamese like rice bowl mixture here but yeah. how come like why is this dish hard to find at Vietnamese restaurants in America I think for a lot of Vietnamese here we have this perception like for our home cooked meal we're not going to have like you know an audience where we can market it to but I would say that this presentation alone is very elevated. We don't eat it like this fancy. Typically, we just put it in a rice bowl and mix everything together, but look at this presentation. All right, so this is a fancy version of a very home-style New Year's dish in Vietnam. Taka, Vietnamese New Year dish. Mm. Typically get marinated in coconut water, and that's where the sweetness is from. Bro, this is really good, man. And I can taste like the sticky rice is flavorful. There's that layer of pate on top that kind of adds that creamy liverness. Yeah, man. All right, our next exclusive Vietnamese New Year's dish is bánh chung. A lot of people can call it bánh tét. Bánh but, tét. Yeah, it's depending on the size and the shape okay. of the, the, the pot. But right now, it's bánh chung. This is what we also eat during our holiday too. It can be sweet, it can be savory. What it looks like right here is definitely savory. But this is after we fry it. Vietnamese Americans from Houston or San Jose or places that it's very difficult to find bánh chung, they would have their relatives send them in frozen packages and then you could just put it in your fridge. Refry it any time of the year and then wow. just have it for the rest of the year, six to eight months. Uh. I like that, it's very crispy on the outside, but in the inside, and this is the savory type of bánh chung. Yo, I just feel like we're celebrating the Lunar New Year right now. Chuck Mung Nam Mui. You still gotta give me my red envelope. Bro, I think you older than me. I'm not even married yet. No, so I gave you the blessing. That's a Viet hustle, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, so this is bánh đạp. Essentially is a uh, crispy rice cake. So what you're supposed to do is you break it in half like this. Okay. Put it together. And you fold it over. Like almost now it looks like a big bun sale. 
And then you gotta add the sauce right in the middle. Oh! So this sauce is mum name, essentially is fermented fish sauce. Banda. Mmm. All right, Rose, so we wrapped up eating some kind of ceremonial Vietnamese dishes that we would only eat only a few times a year, even in Vietnam, right? That's true. But right now, we're just going down to just like the day-to-day, -day, you know, everyday Vietnamese, right. healthy eat. What I love about these dishes here is that for a lot of people, they've probably seen it before, but this is like the next level version of it, you know? And even these dishes in New York City are still somewhat rare to find, but I've had it before. So this is bang kun, which is the rice roll with pork and mushroom mixture, which I love. This is one of my favorite dishes. And then here, you have the bún chả. It's a Bung is vegetable, and then chả is essentially what you see in here, the pork wrapping with some beetle leaves with fish sauce. And then we have a spring roll and definitely a lot of vegetable right here. Mm -hmm. This is bung kun and bung chả. Mm. Yo. Yo, that brings a smile to my face because I think this is the best bung kun I've ever had in my life, bro. Okay, we are still going here at Ban and we have some really exclusive dishes that maybe I've only heard of. Okay, so this is bung hân. It's a vermicelli with clam. This is a type of dish that there's a lot of connotations in Vietnam. Uh, back 10, 20 years ago, it's more of like a working class dish, but now it's been elevated to, you know, street food and it's been normalized to eat, you know, typically every day in, in Vietnam. Bung hân, clam vermicelli. Mmm, I like this a lot, man. Strong lemongrass. So a lot of these dishes are being reinvented in New York because, you know, moving it here, there's not a lot of that same connotations that you would see in mm. Vietnam. And so, like, you know, breaking down that barrier, now we are just have the flavor and the presentations to judge the dish made up. All right, here you have your crispy taro omelet. They eat this in Southern Vietnam. It's oftentimes like a late night food. And the presentation, comparing to street food in Vietnam, definitely is a lot more different. Obviously for street food, it's more like a grab and go. But with this presentation, you can definitely do this dish, share between three or four people. You know, you have yourself a little feast. Bánh bột chiên. Crispy taro omelet. Mm. Yo, that was so good. There's so many textures going on in my mouth. I'm almost, there's like a sweet papaya salad, you know, element yeah. on top. And then there's the crispy taro, and then there's the egginess right. and the sweetness. And overall, man, there's just so many flavors and layers to this dish. All right, so we're nearing the end of our meal here at Bun. Uh, this is a fried chicken bun me. And this is kind of their new invention here. But the baguette is actually from Balthazar, which is a very famous French brasserie over in Soho. No, you could tell from the, you know, the way the baguette looked. Definitely not the traditional uh, bread that you would see in, mm -hmm. for example, Saigon or anywhere in Vietnam. So I like that, you know, elevated touch. Well, also because in New York, people have a very high standard for bread and yeah. baguettes here because there is so much French influence. We're yep. pretty close to France physically. And then also, you know, just the French culture out here is, is very prevalent. So this is the ban mì of central version. We have the spring roll right here. Also the lap sơn, which is the sausage you can see right here, all fried up. Ban mì. Flavors that I've never had before. This sausage alone, you could taste mm. the sweetness of the sausage, but also the spiciness from the jalapenos. I love it. Wow, that is bursting with flavor. That is turmeric fried spicy chicken, guys. Okay, wrapping it up here at Bun, we have, of course, the classic staples. We have the pho dak biet. And boom away. So what Bun is doing really great here is they're able to bring a lot of these ceremonial dishes to the everyday Vietnamese or non-Vietnamese they could try. Uh, personally, for me, I think uh, just trying all these dishes, you know, give, take me back to a lot of good memories that I had. Ceremonial food or dishes should be eaten a little bit more often because if you look at it the same way, you know, American eat turkey just specifically for Thanksgiving, why not eat turkey, you know, once a week or once a month? Last thing I gotta do is try the full broth here. Dude, I like how bold bun is because mm. they're able to serve blood jelly in the bumbo way. Dude, they're serving blood cubes in the Upper West Side. Bun, very bold. All right, we left, just left bun. What is your favorite dish that you had at bun? It has to be the sticky pork rice that is fried called bun chân. It's a ceremonial dish that I don't get to eat too often. So it was very special for me to just like able to try it today. 
Yo, man, some of those ceremonial dishes need to get more popular. I definitely recommend you guys check out Bun because it's just serving some dishes that, it's not weird via dishes. It's not weird flavorings. It's not weird tastings. It's not super adventurous necessarily, but it's just these kind of like dishes that you just wouldn't really imagine being popular at a restaurant. And Bun is serving them. They found a market. They're still making money. They're doing good. So shout out to them, man. It's always good to see. Vietnamese dude will be like, what the hell, man? That is so good. This is the Buddhist. I, I, I feel like it's only right that you take the key. I did it, did it.